Did you have any questions for me before I get rolling here? No, not tonight. Good girl. All right. So what I want to do is tonight we're basically just going to make sure that we've got Schoology in our brain. Um, and then I'm going to do a rather quick exploration of Google Classroom as a uh, online presence. Uh, the folks who write about all this would argue that Google Classroom is not necessarily a learning management system like Schoology and Blackboard are. Uh, people would argue that Google Classroom is what's called a content management system. I would basically come down, frankly, in between. I think Google Classroom can be made to look and act like an LMS, but it requires a lot more work than, say, Schoology or Blackboard. I'm getting a lot of noise uh, off of your microphone, I guess. Uh, it's my dishwasher. Let me turn my dishwasher off. Okay. So let me Is jump that better? over here. Oh, yeah, much better. Not Let me much. jump over here to the Schoology site that I created last week. And remember what I said, as you're looking at building one of these, and here's the other thing I want to make sure we understand. Let me make sure that we understand what this assignment is, either for Schoology or Google Classroom. Also, remember that this is actually a trial run for you to do your hallmark assessment. So once you get the black, the Schoology or the Google Classroom, I'll fix this down here where it says Blackboard. Once you get those built, um, you're pretty much in the clear. And you're going to then put that into the hallmark assessment, and then you're going to uh, review it uh, self-grade using the Quality Matters rubric. I will then, as a part of the Hallmark assessment, come in, look at your self-graded uh, uh, site, and then I'll put my two cents in on how I think you do. So let's go and look at that assignment to make sure. So we're going to be building something either in Schoology or Google Classroom. And we're asking that you develop a course with one, one lesson. And then we'll talk about what that could look like inside of both. And we need to have an introduction and a presentation of objectives. Lift it right off of the uh, quality matters, an essential question, what are we learning? Uh, we need an activity for participants. That can be something as simple as a discussion question or it can be something as interesting as bringing in an outside object like a YouTube video or an Ed Puzzle or any number of Web 2.0 objects because we know how easily it is to bring things in. Uh, we need graphics that basically help me understand. And when I say that, um, graphics can also be like what I did last week with the Schoology where we created different colored folders to indicate different parts of our site. Um, we need to have some kind of web app resource. In other words, either a link that takes us somewhere to help us understand <coughs> the uh, assignment or something that is an application that can be reached through a link that is something that we're going to either use or something that helps us illuminate the uh, the assignment, and then an assessment. So those are the things that we need to see in this online class. And as you can see down here for the Google Classroom, they're exactly the same. So if we go back into what we created last week, we have this nice little video that is a Schoology introduction that I put in here. Now, you don't have to do that. You can have something that looks just like uh, a text file that you would put in here that would be a uh, whatever it is that your uh, little course is that you have created. Creating a course is as simple as 
going into your courses up here, clicking on create, giving the course a name. As you can see, I, I put my uh, fat little smiling face in here for the students to see. And just like in Blackboard and every other one of these, we move through it by clicking on the breadcrumbs that are contained within the, uh, this is actually called a tree, uh, that are contained within the tree that we can then move up and down through it. And as you can see, then I have below it the standards. What are we learning? And this is where I would put in my objectives. Uh, I use the ones from ISTE. You feel free to copy your curricular uh, standards uh, from wherever you will be working with. Then I have another folder here that was assignments. And as you can see, uh, I have some content in here. Some of this content is an attached file. Some of this content is a, a multiple choice test that I created, checking for understanding. And when I go back up to the top again, what I see is I have one more in here that is the uh, assignment area. So as you can see, I don't really have a lot of folders here in my Schoology because I don't need a lot of folders to cover the areas of what I'm using uh, with Quality Matters. I think it's one of the things that scares students off about Quality Matters. They see those those uh, nine standards, and they're like, oh my goodness, how can I do this inside of a uh, online course? Well, four or five folders will get it done if you plan it correctly. Now, let's jump over to Google Classroom. Now, to get to Google Classroom, the first thing you need to do is to have a Google account. If you do not have a Google account, you can certainly create one very simply. I'm going to sign out of this. As you can see, when I go to accounts.google.com, if I've never had a Google account before, what it will allow me to use to do is it will allow me to either use my Gmail login or use a uh, account that I create by going to gmail.com and it will let me then create an account there. I have a Gmail account, so it's waiting for me to log into it. And when I do that, it takes me to here. Now, as you can see, I've already created a Google Classroom. Now, this is how easy it is. Just to remind you, I'm at classroom.google.com. That's how easy this is. I am then going to come over here, and I'm going to click on the plus sign. And it's going to ask me, do I want to join a class, or do I want to create a class? I'm going to create it. So it gives you some advertisement here, and that's fine. It wants you to be able to click off that you've read it. And now I'm ready to create the class. So I'm going to stop here because I've already done this. But as you can see, you're basically just creating a class name. That is required, but the section and the subject are not. So I'll go ahead and click that. Now, let's click in my Google Classroom where I've made. And one of the things that you'll be struck by right away is the simplicity of the thing. As you can see, there's not a whole lot going on on this page. So I click on the folder. No, I do not click on the folder. I'm sorry. There we go. 
I click on the link and it takes me into my Google Classroom. Now, this is where we need to stop and kind of focus. As you can see, it breaks it up into three sections. The first one is called the stream. Sorry. The first one is called the stream. The stream is nothing more than where everything lives. If we think about our Schoology example, this is the course. So in this one, it's called the stream. The next one over is students. If your school is a part of a school district's Google domain, kids are already sitting in here. You don't really need to do much, except you need to come over here and make decisions about what students are going to be able to do. And I would, of course, and this is based upon our knowledge building principles, I would make sure they can post and comment. So I have, I can go through here and I can put people in and invite them, or as I said, they'll be there already. I can create a class drive folder that I can share with my students. Again, that's based upon the fact that you have a a uh, Google domain for your school. I can create a classroom calendar so the kids can know what we are doing. And I can go through and, and fill all this in. Very easy to do. Very easy. Okay. Now let's get down to the nuts and bolts. So it basically runs on the idea of folders, like in Schoology, are identified in the Google Classroom as topics. So I'm going to add it. I have a topic already in here called Introduction. And as you can see, there's nothing going on in here right now. That's because I have to go to the plus sign down here in the lower right. And from here, I can decide what I want to put into this topic. So if I come up here and click on Announcement, this is where I can either type in, share with, or embed anything that I want. So in this announcement, I'm going to put in welcome to Google Classroom. And I'm going to post it. And you can see it's sitting right there. Now, I can go back to my introduction topic. And I can come down here to my plus sign again. I can do a create an assignment. Now, again, what Google tries to do very is to simplify everything. My problem with that, frankly, is that it also means you got to kind of know what this is and then use it for everything that you want to use it for. We would love for this to be called a note, whatever, but instead it's called assignment, and yes, it, it is. it can be that. But for this purpose, let's get to know our class. And then I can come down here to instructions, and I can start typing in things, or I can come down here and click on the little paper clip, and I can drag files into this. That would be a Word doc or a Google doc. 
that I have created that teaches me about whatever it is that I'm trying to do. I'm just going to grab anything here that is a doc file and throw it in here. Grab that. Okay. So now I have my file that I want to add. And as you can see, and I can decide who can see it. And then I can come down here and I can either say students can view the file, they can edit the file, or I can make a copy of it. I just want them to view it. So at this point, I am basically building the content of my topic, just like I built it within the folders of uh, Schoology. I can also add other things. I can go to the, the Goog and I can find a video that I might want to use. Let's see if I can find one Let's do that one. And I'm going to add that. Now I have a topic called introduction. Here is my Word doc. That is my explanation. And then I have a video that is a further explanation. Now, if I were doing this, I would probably use another tool to make my introduction, and let's go look at what it could you could do. If I used a tool like Go Animate, I could take a Go Animate out of that. And I could put it into my introduction. I never do get this right because I always do it from the link. I think it's school instead of schools. There we go. Now I'm in. If I wanted to, I could go and get a video that I have already created in here. And let me go ahead and just grab the one I created for the class last night. I can go into this and I can do a share export grab the embed code, copy it, and I can come back into here, and I can go over to the plus sign again, and this time I can create a announcement. Watch this. And I can go and do the link and I can add a link. And what it will do is it will then have my uh, embedded video in there. And it didn't seem to like my link. Huh. That's okay. I can jump back into GoAnimate. I can either download it, send it off to YouTube, or I can just get the link and send, put the link in there. This kind of throws me, though, because this should work. It's nothing more than a link.
And I don't know why it doesn't like it. Let me scroll back here and look. Yes, I see, I think, maybe where our problem is. So let me get rid of this at the beginning. And let's try it now. Nope, still doesn't like it. All right. I'm going to research that a little bit and see why it doesn't like that. Um, maybe if I tried it with this, no, nope, it will not like it there either. I'm going to have to look that up. If we can't do it through uh, that, we might be able to do it by uploading it to a, a YouTube drive. But I don't want to do that. That's too much jumping around uh, trying to get things to work. So I'm, I will do a little research here on the link and see what's going on with that. Because here's why, I'll show you. I can do the same thing inside of a tool like Answer Garden that we played in. And in Answer Garden, I can create an, a uh, place where kids can have a way to respond. It's very easy to do. What is Google Classroom? So that would be my question. I'd put my answer garden. I'm going to make it a classroom thing. Uh, I'm going to allow for 40 characters. Uh, I'm going to allow for it to live for a while, for a week. And once I create that, then I have the ability to put that into an answer into my uh, wiki, my uh, Google Classroom. Yes, yes, I know I didn't put anything in there. Thanks. And now I've wandered off into something. I'm just going to stop right there because I've wandered into a garbage land. This should have worked. And as I said, I'll find out. But to go back to this. So here we are. We have ways of putting in content into our Google Classroom. Remembering that the buttons here that call things assignments and announcements can be also seen as a place to put the kind of long um, expedition, exposition that you need to put in for kids to understand. Now, if you have what I just did here, which is I added something, uh, and then I go to click it open. It opens it inside, and I can print it. I can do anything I want with it. That's kind of nice. The problem with that is um, kids might get a little lost in knowing what to do once they've done it. So you have to remind them to use your back arrow. And there we are. So that is a beginning. Now, add topic. Here I go. I'm now creating a second topic or folder. And I'm coming down here to my plus. And I'm going to create an announcement. This is what we are learning. And as you can see, it gives me a place to put this. I'm going to leave it where it is, and I'm going to post. Now I have a way of having more than one topic. I could go through here and just keep adding topics.
And then I can go back and I can build. Oh, if I spell it wrong or make a mistake, I can go in and rename it. And it's as simple as that. And I have all of this over here to choose from. Now, let's look at its weakness. And this is a glaring weakness, if you ask me. As you can see, I can put a question in here. But nowhere does it allow me to build the quiz like in Schoology. That's a shame. You can also look at it, though, as a way to generate conversation that other kids in the class might have. So this fits very nicely with the ideas of knowledge building principles when it comes to sharing knowledge, building knowledge together, democratizing knowledge, moving knowledge forward. So I can post a question. And as you can see here, I can give it a short answer. And I can ask. And I can look then and see who has responded to this question. And I can add class comments. You can see it knows who I am. And I can then get a sense of what everybody's thinking. If you notice, when I created it, I allowed kids to uh, comment on each other's, which I think is a very powerful way to get the, the ball rolling, as it were. I'm sitting here, I'm realizing that <laughs> my uh, assignment or my question here, I forgot to put in what is an online class. And I'll fix that. But as you can see, Google Classroom is extremely simple. And that's why some people love it. I'm not, frankly, a huge fan of it because I find that there's too many things that I can do much easier inside of Schoology and Blackboard. But I also realize that this is what a lot of people are using in their classrooms. And there's probably those of you out there who are Google Classroom teachers who are sitting there moaning and groaning at my rather uh, inept attempt here to, to build one. But I still would argue that if you think about everything that we're doing, that we are essentially working through the topic structure to create those folder-like structure that we then can use uh, to organize ourselves along quality matters. Now, to help you, back over here in the Blackboard space, I have put videos in here that are much better than what I've been doing about how to create and to use Google Classroom. I would strongly hope that you will start here. And I have it in here in multiple ways, as you can see. I have it as a video tutorials, but I also have it as documents that you can download, hold in your hand, print or print out, hold in your hand, or just sit here and look at, so that you can have something that will help you work your way through if you so choose to use this. I tell you what, I'm going to go do a little research on my own so that next week when I see you again, I'm going to have the problem with embedding links and having them actually show what's in the embeddable code. I'm going to have that sorted out. I'll have an answer for you, in other words. So I think
for today. All we need to do is to show you how to get in, uh, understanding the structure and understanding where things are that you use in your Google Classroom. Remember, the biggest thing that I have a problem with is it doesn't have a place for me to put things discreetly into it except to put in an assignment. And then from that assignment, I can draw a document in that kids then can respond to. Now, let me just revisit that real fast, because one of the things that I didn't show you really well, if I go in here and I pick a document, and I've seen this done quite a lot, so let's just go get that one again. I can allow for how that document can be utilized. So if I want to allow students to view it, but also edit it, that way they can, it can be a document that basically says, read this, do this, and then it will be uh, uploaded back into the Google Classroom. You do the same thing over in Schoology, but here in Google Classroom, because everybody is a part of the Google Classroom, it becomes very simple for everything to exist. And we are definitely, if I click over here, as you can see, we have the ability to look at uh, other classrooms that we may have made. Uh, you have a settings down here, which is really nice because it allows you to go through and decide how you want things to look and feel. So if you don't have any questions, I'm going to go off and research the answer to the why can't I put an embeddable link into a Google uh, announcement or a Google assignment because I should be able to. And then when I see you next week, We'll go over the sort of finessing out of our Google Classroom. We are rapidly coming to an end. Uh, next Thursday, we will review Google Classroom again. Uh, and then the Thursday after that, we will go over the hat. And as I said, I hope you understand that this structure here of you deciding to build either, and let me stress that, either a Schoology or a Google Classroom. Notice that in the module it says Module 5 and Module 5A. You don't do both. You don't do both. You pick, you pick which frame that you want to work within, either Classroom or Schoology. And then you create that course with one lesson. That's all. Make sure within the course in that one lesson, all of these things are present. For our hallmark, we will take that course, and then we will look at it through the lens of our quality matters, which is something you already did, by the way. You did that back here when we were talking about quality matters in Module 4, you used one of the uh, courses that we looked at that were Schoology courses in Jefferson County, Colorado. And we looked at those, and we looked at it through the lens of quality matters. So in just two more weeks, we will have reached the end of this course. Uh, you have a course until the rest of the semester to get things done and into live text. The live text, let's look at the live text on the, uh, because it can be, depending upon how well your browser plays with the live text, the final has a quality matters template loaded into it. 
But I have found that it doesn't play very nice. And so what I've tried to do is to give you that same uh, ability to download a Word document and then complete the Quality Matters uh, examination. Sorry about that. Of your course that you have created. So let's scroll down here and find our course. And let's jump in here and look at the task. I'm jumping through this rather quickly because my windows do not look like your windows inside of Live Text. And I don't want to confuse you. You are essentially looking for the document for us to use, uh, and then you're going to open it up and respond to it. Now, this is what I'm talking about. As you can see, there is sort of a uh, here is your QM rubric, and then over here is where you are going to identify what these various scores can be. I find that this template really is a pain to use. It's much easier to just go ahead and download and use the attached file that is here instead of trying to uh, make this uh, online space work. So we'll go over all of that next week. We're going to go back over Google Classroom. I will have answers for the questions that I thought I had answers to today, but obviously I don't. And then the week after that, we will literally walk through this assignment uh, together so you can see how to do it. If you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. 502-457-2937. Text any time, the day or night, and you will get a response. Evelyn, uh, I think I'm done. Do you have any questions? On Google Classroom. Yep. Because we have Google Classroom at school, so all the kids have an account. Yep. Boy, so... And how are you going to get me into your Google Classroom? Well, I had to figure that out when I get there. <laughs> Can I just get <laughs> the code? Isn't there yeah. like you? That's what I'm saying. That's all you do. Okay. And it's the same thing in Schoology. You give me a code and I can get into your class. Just, just, I've used it a little bit with some teachers I work with. So What, what I would do is, because I did a horrible job with it today, because I thought it did things that uh, obviously I'm having trouble with. But there's plenty of documentation right here, any way you want it, video, PDF. So watch those, okay? Yes. All righty. I will see you next week. All right. Thank you. Bye.